Hi, welcome to Raise Sensation. I'm your host, Dan. And in this episode, I am going to be talking about the trip I took to Pennsylvania to attend the Eddie P. Comic Convention 2024. All right, so um, the way I'm going to do this video is I am going to talk a little bit about the event. Um, then uh, I will go through some of the things I picked up. And when I get to certain, um, certain titles, I will uh, talk a little bit about the person. Um, so anyway, here we go. Um, you know, I went to this because like a lot of people, the fact that the cartoonist kayfabes put out a video every day and you know I would many times um, listen to it as I was driving and um, then uh, you know if it sounded like it was something I would want to watch then I would also uh, watch it later in the evening after I got home um, you know my time not driving, not working, not spending time with my family is a little bit uh, um, limited. So uh, listening to it while I'm driving might seem kind of counterintuitive because it's about comics, but, um, but it worked. I enjoyed hearing uh, Ed and Jim talk. Um, one thing I, I did, uh, I got to meet uh, Brian Moss there and uh, Brian was instrumental in helping the family put together this um, this event, uh, you know, with support, supporting the family uh, before the event and stuff. I'm not sure how much actual hands-on he did for the event, but, but Brian it has definitely been very open about his his feelings and his sense of loss with Ed and uh, I spoke to Brian for a few minutes and uh, we just discussed about how some people thought that the persona that Ed put out there as kind of being brash um, was who he really was. And I could tell that, you know, I think a lot of people could tell that, you know, it was partly just an act, you know, it's part of uh, being a showman, of getting people to watch, of, of sometimes playing the heel in the wrestling game, I'm not saying that sometimes, you know, Eddie might not have said something that could have hurt someone's feelings for real, whether it was just a, an act or not. It, you know, it was obvious he got under some people's skins uh, with some of the things he said. As someone who's off said something offhand and didn't meant to offend somebody, but hurt their feelings, um, you know, I understand that. And it was just nice to talk to Brian, and Brian's whole thing is about letting people know a little bit more about the real Ed, you know, even if you knew it was an act that he was putting on for part of the cartoonist kayfabe, uh, that's still not the same as learning about the true Ed. Um, and I think Brian's trying to uh, to make that, you know, make him more well known. And I, I think his, um, you know, his uh, whole family, Ed's whole family was there. I talked to his mom for a little bit. Um, the, 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 his brother Bob and his uh, sisters Bree and Justine um, were obviously big behind the scenes of getting this going and I didn't have a chance to talk to them. But I talked to his mom for a little bit and I, I said thank you for sharing. You know, it, it can be hard sometimes uh, to put your feelings out there that way and it was, um, it's helpful I think to people who are missing um, missing Ed, who didn't really know him that well, they just knew him from the channel, to have them open up and talk about the Ed that they knew. Um, so the, um, the show wasn't that big, you know, it's a comic con, but you know, not in the way we think of now, the kind of big shows where we might have met uh, uh, Jim and Ed setting up their, uh, their tables. This is a small one. This is like the little kind of local ones you would usually see, you know, 
I think they said there were 40 plus vendors. Um, so that's, that sounds about right. Um, so not a, not a huge show, but, um, but it was fun. I, I bought a couple things and, you know, I have a problem when I get to these shows, um, you know, I, I'm very bad at, at, uh, dealing with people face to face, standing right there in front of them and passing judgment on their comics and thinking like, no, that's not for me because I've been on the other side of that table and it, it can, um, it can be a little hurtful. It can feel a little rejection no matter, no matter how uh, business savvy you are and how understanding you are that not everyone's going to buy from you. Um, so hopefully all the vendors uh, felt good about the what they did there. Um, the big thing was uh, a fellow called uh, West Coast uh, Dave has a YouTube channel called West Coast Avengers. I think it is. Um, and uh, he actually shot the uh, panel, which was the main um, point, of, you know, point of the day. You know, the besides vendors, there was just this uh, one panel. And um, he filmed that, and it's up on his YouTube channel for people to watch. Uh, the people on the panel were um, Ed's uh, mother, uh, his sisters, Bree and Justine, and uh, his brother Dave, uh, Dave, Bob, sorry, and West Coast Dave, uh, Brian Moss, and uh, Jim Rugg. I think that was everybody. So, um, so anyway, that 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 panel was nice, um, very informal, and uh, just like I said, it's just humanizing Ed, remembering the Ed that the family knew. Uh, so uh, I'll put a link to that, his YouTube channel down below. Um, I didn't really get to, uh, I talked to uh, a couple people while I was at the show. So let's, um, uh, but let's go to the, the comics. And, and like I said, I'll, that'll give me something more to talk about uh, because, um, you know, I don't usually talk about things other than comics so, or, or books or what have you. So, uh, and this is, this is, a, a their, their big announcement for the show was the, uh, they've teamed up with Zoop. Um, they're going to have, uh, they're going to run a, a, um, campaign to fund the Switchblade Shorties book that Ed was, had been working on and was hopefully going to have published soon, um, from a major publisher who, who backed out of the deal and so it's going to be done. Now, the Switchblade Shorties, um, I was really enjoying um, the Switchblade Shorties. Ed's work, um, I think uh, Red Room, although there were parts of Red Room where it was just kind of like, I, I get where he was coming from with the over-the-top gore and stuff, and I don't mind it. I mean, I can tell you that uh, in the 70s, and especially in the 80s, all I wanted to do was watch films with horrific gore, you know, because I loved practical effects. And I think Red Room comes from a place similar to that. And there's some terrific scenes, some terrific comic book writing, drawing in the Red Room series, like uh, the raid on the uh, apartment uh, by the SWAT team in the one. That's that's a great action scene. There's, there's And there's a lot of character stuff in there that's Pretty cool. Um, but the Switchblade Shorties, you could tell, was personal to Ed. Um, you know, the, uh, the financial situation the girls were in, the stratosphere um, that, uh, that they all came, the, some of the kids came from and the differences between them, and yet they were still being friends. Um, I, I think he was doing a lot of interesting stuff, and it was uh, great to see uh, occasionally watch a video where he was uh, making, you know, drawing the, the comics. Um, anyway, so that's coming up. Keep an eye out for that. And that being said, let me uh, give a little um, show to some of the things I picked up. Um, this is uh, The Wizard Staff. And uh, I picked this up. Um, it's uh, a little... <laughs> it's a little funny comic uh, about a f father and daughter... Um, 
who uh, keep getting caught up with mad scientists or supernatural things. The dad is a good-natured but dumb parent, and the, there's the wise-cracking daughter who's the real know-it-all and usually has more common sense the, than the adults in the room. You know, that's kind of a, a little bit of a cliche at this point. However, if I was going to draw myself into a comic and any of my three kids, it'd probably be somewhat of the same dynamic. So I can't fault them that. Um, it's nice cartooning. And uh, some of the gags are very much um, a little predictable. But there's some funny stuff in it. And... Um, you know, if you know a young person that you think would enjoy this kind of thing, again, I'm going to try. I'm going to try and find links for everybody for all this stuff, and I'll post them down in the uh, in the description. So, uh, yeah. So that's the Wizard Staff. What was the? I don't think I. Story and art by Ryan Paul Hogerson. I guess that's how you say that. So, uh, I'll look for that one. Um, this is JK Papers. Uh, this is Nightblade One Shot. Um, and, uh, let me put that aside for a second. So, this issue is kind of like, um, a little bit gimmicky. This is the gimmick is that every single page is done by. A different uh, independent cartoonist um, and there are several people here whose uh, whose work I have picked up before um, you know because it's this one page thing for me there's not a big impact it's do you like the artwork that's on that one page and um, I think it's fun. I think it's a good way to see a bunch of different cartoonists work. And it's kind of one of those over-the-top... Uh, I guess it's kind of like Image Comics, Outlaw Comics kind of thing. Not that Image Comics are Outlaw Comics, but they, there was some go-between between, between those uh, two things. And um, so, yeah, so there's a lot of different artists. Uh, some of the stuff is uh, more successful than... Than other things. Um, there you go. That's Nightblade. He also apparently uh, uh, I I the, this was in the uh, the bag with uh, this comic. This is also J K Papers uh, Publishing. Now this is by um, Alan Robinson. And I had already bought his stuff like this. I follow him on Instagram. I really like uh, his art. Um, you know, the, the comics themselves, uh, I think he's, uh, they're not quite as, you know, there's some, some weird things like, I'm not sure where all these black spots are on everything. That I mean, I, I think that, uh, I think that the comics are, are okay. They weren't as good as what I imagined they were going to be because of his art, which I really like. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. They're just a little cliche and, you know, the usual kind of ultra-violence, which I, I enjoy. I, I think they're fun. If you like this artwork, um, I will... Uh, there will be a link for uh, JC, JK Papers down below and you can get uh, get those comics there um, this is issue two uh, uh, Tales of the Extra Normal and um, this is the main story here is uh, uh, trying to figure out uh, Okay, so the main story is this one. Counseled? Counseled? Is that what this is? Uh, I don't know the... I don't know how to say the, the 
the writer's name, Mike Walls, did the art. So it's all, it's, uh, and you know, maybe this doesn't make too much sense because this is issue two. So he didn't have any copies of issue one. But it's funky art, uh, a lot of one page things instead of panels. There's these monsters. There's a there's a border between two different dimensions, and um, I don't know. There, there seems to, there might be humans on one side and monsters on the other side, and a human comes to request that the border not allow so many people to go back and forth. I think that's what's happening, and uh, and this creature here is the one making the decision. And uh, they ultimately say no and try and squish the human like a bug. Um, and then there's a couple one-page gags. Oh, they also gave some cool little stickers. Like, nice little stuff. I've never been fed. I have never been fed. And this cute little one here. Um, I like the art in this. Uh, like I said, there's not much of a story to tell from this. So, uh, but if that looks like your cup of tea, you want to see that art, then by all means, again, hopefully the link below. Oh, I, and here's some, um, this is Jim Rugg's latest. And, uh, you know, Jim's a, um, I know that when I, you know, uh, Jim's, Artwork can look very different from project to project. This uh, looks a lot like, um, where's that? Where's the other one that he done? Uh, this is one uh, that came out last year, I guess. Let me see about this one. So here's um, True Crime Funnies. And this one came out last year. And, um, it's an anthology, with the main thing being this um, this FBI agent character, and uh, you know, there's you can see little bits of you know Jim is a chameleon can be a chameleon. He he uh, has done all kinds of uh, artwork where he's um, mimicking someone else's style, and. Uh, I actually really like this. Um, he's done action in comics before. I mean, that's kind of basically what he's known for. Um, if you're looking at Street Angels or his Hulk work or uh, uh, what's the, what's the, what's his, God, I want to say Black Dynamite. That's not what it's called. Uh, dang, I can't think of it offhand. Um, so this is the one that came out last year. This is, even though it has a different name, Conspiracy Theories, and the the the, the first couple of comics are about Conspiracy series, Theories, um, it's very similar to the True Crime one. And uh, this is very illustrative. This is like those educational comics that used to be put out in like the 50s and 60s. I mean, that's the kind of referencing I think goes on here and um, I find that really interesting uh, you know and I know that the cartoonist kayfabe guys had done an episode on um, the e I think it was EC comics had done the um, done a comic on uh, UFOs God I hope I'm remembering that right um, and I think this might that might have helped inspire this and there's some talking heads they're about people. But then, you know, we have those, cons the conspiracy things, you know. But then they ha he has this uh, new um, wrestling strip. And um, occasionally, like I said, Jim's known for, for having action in his comics. But uh, sometimes I, I don't think when he's doing the actual comics, some of the times the some of the panels don't hit quite as well as I would think they would since he he's obviously knows what really works. But in this one, I'm not sure what the difference is, but boy, he really makes this, this really 
works here. This is really good action, a lot of fun. Uh, and then he returns to this, this the FBI agent from the uh, True Crime Funnies, uh, White, Mr. White, what was his name? Um, and they have another, and it says based on a true story, um, there might have been, I mean, this character is obviously, uh, I don't, I think he just came up with this character. It, you know, it's the usual bait and switch, true story. But I think this might actually follow a real, um, a real uh, story that happened with the FBI fighting a drug ring. But I didn't bother to look it up, uh, so I can't tell you for sure. Again, some very strong work from Jim. This is some of my favorite stuff. Here's uh, here's a rundown of his, some of his stuff. Um, I've got everything except I don't have that the the big Hulk grand design. You know the 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 Marvel stuff. Even though I like Hulk, okay, I have some of the. I don't have the complete, but I have some of that. Um, there's the God. What was that one called? Oh, Aphrodisiac. That's what it was called. Um, so, anyway, I like all of Jim's stuff. I've got some videos that cover some of Jim's other things, including looking through his zines. I think this is a great follow-up to True Crime Funnies. I hope, uh, I, you know, he's, there's a couple things he's hinted at that he was working on. I'm hoping that maybe this year we'll see um, we'll see some more stuff from Jim. Oh, uh, here's one thing I was, said I was going to talk a little bit about. One thing is that, like, I sent Jim... In one episode, uh, Jim was bemoaning the fact that so many bad girl comics weren't that good. Uh, or, you know, because Image was really hyping them up. And I had bought a, a long box full of comics that were all supposed to be female-oriented. Um, yeah, they called them bad girls, but some of them weren't bad girls. You know, they were femme force and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, I plucked out what I wanted from the box, and then I mailed uh, Jim and Ed the comics. And, um, you know, I was going like, well, just because I don't think these comics are worth looking at, <laughs> maybe maybe they'll like them, or they'll at least like to see them and um, get an idea about what some of those comics are without ha them having to spend money on it. And actually, when I took the box to the post office and was mailing it, and I saw how much it was going to cost me just to mail these to them when I didn't know if they'd like them, <laughs> I almost I almost threw them in a dumpster instead. <laughs> just kidding, I wouldn't do that. But uh, but anyway, so like about a week after I had sent them that box, they, they um, Jim was Jim was angry about a box that had been sent to them with absolute trash. Although he didn't say what kind of trash or anything like that, just since someone had sent them a box of absolutely terrible comics. And I was like, oh my God. I mean, I knew they weren't, I didn't think they were great comics, but I thought uh, <laughs> he might get some enjoyment out of them. Um, but then I was like, oh boy, I didn't mean to, to make him actually angry at me for uh, sending this stuff. Um, so I actually talked to Jim about that uh, at the con. I apologized for it. And he goes, oh, well, no, that wasn't your box. It was something else. I won't go into that. But uh, that someone had sent that, that had gone. He goes, he goes I think that, that Ed and I split those up. I took some of those. <laughs> so I was like, whew, I would hate for one of the last things that, you know, got aired there on the cartoonist kayfabe was something with Jim angry about me at something. Um, then I, I saw this on a table and I said, oh, this looks, I think I've seen this and not picked this up before. Um, I'll just pick it up since he's, this person's here at the show. Um, I didn't realize that this is actually published by Image. So this is a regular comic book kind of thing. And I'm not actually sure if it, if it was the right, you know, it's all done by one guy. Uh, you would think, uh, well, I'm just surprised. I don't know what he looks like. I don't know if that was the guy that was at the table. I'm really bad at talking to the people at these conventions because I'm always sticking my foot in my mouth and I don't want to do that. So I don't really talk that much. Anyway, um, so it's a uh, it's a barbarian comic. You know I like those. And uh, it's Bloodrick. That sounds like a fancy English posh name, really, to me, to be honest. Um, 
uh, but he's the king of the forest, self-proclaimed king of the forest. Uh, it starts off the first issue. This is the first three issues of the, of the comic collected together. Um, it starts off with, uh, here he is pro proclaiming himself the king of the woods. And, uh, but his survival skills are, uh, the only thing he's really good at is, is killing things. And uh, he gets hurt by a, a, a bear. And then he kind of, uh, kind of is in a bad way. So this is kind of, you know, the, starts off there. Then he sees a dragon in the sky. I'm not going to go into this too much. I did read, I did read a little bit, but not really, didn't give it a real thorough going over. But here's the thing with barbarians. Um, I don't want to just see them fighting against nature. There, he saw a dragon flying by. But then we do get to some cool supernatural stuff. There's this guy here who he comes across who wants uh, Bloodrick to be his slave in exchange for him feeding and he's going to nurse Bloodrick back to health. And he says he'll do all that for him. But uh, but Bloodrick has to kneel before him and uh, he, he decides not to do that. And then there's some scenes of ultra-violence and uh, then he devours the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Even though, quite frankly, the guy looks sickly and gross as hell. Um, but, hey, there the dragon comes back. And the dragon had been under that evil guy's control. And so the dragon, he's afraid at first he's going to have to fight the dragon. But the dragon's cool with him because he killed the guy, that the sorcerer, who had him under control. I like this black and white here. I don't mind the color on this. I, you know, one of my pet peeves is, is modern color. Um, but this is not bad. I like this. Um, oh, here's part where he's, he's holding steady. And, and to show that his, <laughs> his arms are burning from the keeping that pose, he actually draws it on fire and then bubbling. That's kind of a fun thing. And then I was going to show one more. There's one more. Uh, he runs into one more crazy monster. Look at that. I'll eat your brains. <laughs> and then uh, there's some. There's a, there's a little bit of back matter in here. Not a lot. A little bit of behind the scenes stuff. Um, it's image. I hadn't really meant to buy something. I could have got it anywhere at the place. But I'm not upset I got it. Like I said, I, I had seen this before. And I had meant to pick it up. So, um, I picked this up. Uh, there was a guy who, who seemed to have a fair amount of... Um, I, at first, I thought he had a whole lot of stuff, uh, uh, different titles available. But in actuality, they, he had alternative covers, you know, for everything. Which I'm not crazy about, but whatever. And uh, this is a... this. Is um, I picked this up. I asked the guy himself, "What's what's what do you think?" I'm a horror fan, not a superhero fan. What do you think would be the best for me? And he picked this out of it. Um, it's a um, good witch. Uh, this magic dealer. I don't know if you want to call her a witch or not, but uh, uh, some evil creatures slay her mother. She thinks her father did it. So before he can explain what happened, she turns him into this monster to do her bidding. And so she's running around, they're running around uh, killing creatures, fighting evil wizards, and uh, she's got her father enslaved. So, um, uh, it looks okay. Um, again, I just looked through it, everything once, gave it a quick not not a real quick read, but tried to get the, the gist of it before I did this video, but I haven't really read it. It looks okay. It doesn't look like it's going to be one of my all-time favorites, but, um, but you know, that's an interesting premise. The girl has got her father in case... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, uh, but by the end of this book, she realizes 
she's made a mistake. Okay, well, that's all right, too. Um, so that's uh, Writhe and Pain. Um, Tom Schioli that was there. Um, when I first went up to his table, um, I was like, well, I've got everything you, you've done, pretty much. Um, so, I, But then I realized, oh, he had this Transformers vs. G.I. Joe on his table. It's volume two of three that collects it all. Now, I don't care, you know, I don't follow Transformers or G.I. Joe. But I was like, oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take this and see how... But I like how crazy Tom can get. Tom can really go to some weird places with his writing. Um, his artwork is, um, you know, uh, it's really fun. I, you know, it's not, you know, I, I enjoy it. I think it fits what he's doing. Um, I don't have a problem with it the way some people do with, because it, you know, um, has so much Kirby influence. I think that's okay because it, it does deviate a lot. Um, And uh, so anyway, I haven't really read this yet. Like I said, I'm not a fan of either of these things. So uh, hopefully it's going to be really weird. And like I said, <laughs> I've gotten volume two of three volumes. Oh, one thing is when, when I was at his table, somebody came up and started talking about Barry Windsor Smith, who I'm a huge fan of Barry. But, but you know, I've mentioned this once or twice and other things I've done. His last work that he took like over a decade to do, you know, Monster, um... It is one of the most beautiful books I've ever seen. Um, the story is pretty straightforward. You know, if you read that same story, not in a in the form of a, a graphic novel, you would say, hey, this is a pretty good story. You wouldn't think it was the greatest thing in the world. So it all boils down to Barry's artwork. But, you know, my thing is that it's not my favorite of his. It is obviously a huge labor of love the amount of work that it went into it is crazy but to me because there's so much on the page so many different textures for all the different things that are there it um it kind of you know it's not my favorite of history I, I, and again i i don't think anyone is going to draw a better looking book than that and the story is you know um, you know, well told, except for like I said, it, it just it's a it's a reading experience that's kind of that I feel is kind of slowed down by the by the weight of the artwork, and I I kind of said that to him, and my opinion is just my opinion. I said I don't know if he means it to for that to happen, you know that that when I'm reading and I'm having it slowed down, as, if that's what he meant. And Tom goes, oh, uh, you know, basically he said. You, you know, he's a genius. Uh, he knows exactly what he's doing. He meant it. And I'm going like, well, you know, everybody who reads a book, you know, an artist can't control what people are going to feel. They can't control everything. They can't control how every different per person is going to react. And that's why I said it that way. Um, but uh, I think Tom was kind of like, thought I was trying to say that Barry Windsor Smith didn't know, didn't have a, a firm idea about what he was doing. Um, that's not what I was saying. But, you know, then what am I going to do? Argue with Tom about what I meant, what I didn't mean? No, I'm not going to. I, You know, if, what if we got into, into a Donnybrook about it? You know, I like watching his channel. I, I like when he, I was really happy when he was doing the uh, Thor episodes where he would look through the Jack Kirby uh, episodes of, you know, and, and read the the uh, tales of Asgard because those are some of my when I was a kid those were coming out when I was a kid I'm I'm a bit older than the kayfabe guys and, and I love those those were some of my favorite comics and they they remain some of my favorite Kirby ones so um, anyway I'm just teasing Tom I'm just kind of joking but there you go and this final one um, some of you may know uh, that I. Uh, I've been promote help trying to help promote not in a not in a big way but as much as I can um, the uh, the Turbo Pit Fighter guys have done um, mm -hmm. uh, a comic on Crom 
uh, a character created by Robert E. Howard um, for, you know, of Conan the Barbarian fame. And uh, Crom is, you know, uh, Gardner Fox made some stories using the name Crom, whether it has anything at all to do with the god <laughs> that uh, Conan talks about um, in his stories or not. I'm not sure. This is pretty much made up whole cloth for uh, Gardner Fox's um, comics. Anyway, those comics are in the public domain. So a bunch of people have been doing comic books using the name Crom because Conan the Barbarian is like a, a trademark name. So you just can't use that yet. But you can get away with using Crom and having that Robert E. Howard tie-in. Well, this is yet another one. There's at least a half dozen books, and that including um, the one that Turbo Fit, Kurt from Turbo Pit Fighters is doing. Um, so I picked this one up. I'd seen this online. I probably was going to buy it at some point, but it was nice to to meet the, one of the one of the people who made it in person here. Um, and uh, it's a biggie. And so it's a couple people doing short stories. Some of the people, I don't know their artwork. And some of it I like better than others. Um, and there are a couple people they got to work on this who um, I did know before this and I'm kind of a fan of so you can see the different styles here it's a cute little water monster and there, here's Alex Turbin who I've um, written about on the channel before giving some of his work Uh, you know, I like Alex, and I like to see that. And I like Alex's monsters. And uh, here's uh, Alan Robinson again, um, who uh, did uh, Don't, uh, don't uh, Mess With Tori. And so you know I like his artwork, too. This is kind of fun. Uh, the, the, he, uh, he does have a weird way of drawing the veins to show the, the muscles in, the, in his hero and in the monster. He def the monster definitely seems to get a lot bigger in some of these panels than in others. There's another one by Faros. Got a little. And here's a little bit of backstory on the original Crom comics. So anyway, so that was my haul uh, from the um, from the convention. Um, you know, I wish I was the kind of person who could talk. Um, you know, express themselves a little bit better, as you can tell already from the interactions I have with people and my little stories. They almost always seem to be me uh, not expressing myself well, so it's probably best that I, I don't. But um, it was uh, it was definitely worth it for me to go. I really enjoyed it. Um, they're talking already about next year and whether they need a bigger venue and have more people. I don't know, um, you know, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It, it'd be great to, to, uh, to have a show, to have the show go on, um, and for them to, you know, it's, it's really good for the family, I think, to help process the loss, uh, of Ed and, I think it was good for a lot of the people that that admired Ed 
to get together, to have a reason to show up all in one place and uh, talk about them. And um, even though I didn't talk to many people, um, I enjoyed my, uh, you know, it was, it was well worth my time to go there. I had a lot of fun, um, even though it, it was a short visit. And um, anyway, that's it. I think that's all. I don't know what else I was thinking I was going to say, but that's it for now. Hey, thanks very much for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll see you again soon.